All right, with Jason B with JWB Bose. He is in the process right now of putting a piece of wood that was just pulled out of a steamer into a form. There it is. See how this is lined up to the form right there? The wood. There we go. It's going to be set and then pressed and then molded onto this form. And then I'm going to let Jason explain it, pretty much how the rest of this goes. So, this is his apprentice Christian in there, by the way. <laughs> So I am compressing the wood. Right, yeah, give us a little play back a little bit. Not much, just enough. Just a little bit. Right. Now, slowly, because the wood is plasticized at this point. Slowly gonna bend it over the form. some flaws in the side of this piece, but that's all right. The limb is wide enough. That is amazing. If you go too fast, you're not getting them giving enough time for the wood to stretch, you know? Right. Mm. Okay, grain ruptures. Now you use the term plasticized. That is uh, softened up from steam? For yeah, us. from boiling. I boil the wood. Okay. I feel like... Right here? Nope, I'm not. How long do you, does it act normally take for something, you know? Uh, usually it depends on the thickness of the piece of wood, you know? Mm -hmm. um, for a piece this thick, and boil it for about 40 minutes. About yeah, 40 minutes. Now, releasing. Yep, there you go. Keep that there. That was just that. Yeah, the ratchet. So real quick, this you're going to be taking this and adding clamps to this. I'm assuming. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because there's gaps still. So I'm going to put a clamp right here because I want to take this one off. All right. And it's logical to say that all of this is actually going to be compressed firm to the mold, correct? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Tell us about the wood you're using. The wood? Yes. That's sugar maple. Sugar maple. Sugar maple. Now, is there a particular reason that you choose this wood, or? Yes, because it accepts blue. It accepts blue? It accepts the blue that I use, like uh, any collagen-based glue. You want a big one? Uh, no, I'll try this one. And what makes it so much different from, say, oak or pine or something like that, other than? From what I understand, it's called a diffuse porous wood. Diffuse porous wood. Wood. Yeah, wood. Diffuse me. porous, yeah. Um, uh, certain woods just don't accept the glue very well. It doesn't, it doesn't absorb, or um, the shearing strength mm -hmm. of the wood isn't very good, because these types of bows are under so much stress. Um, I've had wood actually, like, the grain slip like this. Right over yeah. top of itself. Yeah, like, I've tried using hickory. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've had, like, like a, a very lightweight bow work. Um, you want a big 
Right, now this is what type of bowl again that we're doing here? Turkish. Turkish. This is for a three piece. The tip's already been tinned for it. Right there, okay. So this this Turkish bowl will be comprised of three three pieces of wood. That's right. As well as what other uh, material? Another piece of maple, or like yellow birch or something, or hornbeam for the handle. Now this will have horn in, involved in it. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna have a horn belly, and then it's gonna be backed. But this is these are gonna be kits that I'm putting them together for people, you know, so people can make put together their own bow. You know, they have their all the components, and uh, they can learn do the work themselves. You know, if they want to learn. It's a good start. You know, this is. I'm not going to be around forever, you know, it's like... Uh, Pass the craft on. Yeah, man. You it's, know, and it's like... Expose more people to it's, it. Yeah, expose more people to it and, and history, you know, because if we lose our understanding of history... Then who are we? Yeah, who are we and what... what then what, you know? And I feel like this is such a connecting experience. It's... It's, I mean, every single bow I make, it teaches me something new about myself. And uh, if I can be a part of helping other people do that for themselves, you know, and job well done. It's mm -hmm. pretty amazing, bro. It's all about patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which may or may not be suited to uh, most people, but. How long will this sit in the form like this? I see you have several here. Yeah, I, I leave them in the form for a month. A month. A month, at least. Tomorrow, I'll pull the straps off and then reclamp it. Because mm -hmm. if you leave these uh, straps on, then the wood like, starts to spalt. Um, so, say that again. Explain. Yeah, it'll start to spalt. Spalt? Yeah, like you'll see some some of it. Like this. Yeah, some spalting will happen to it. It's kind of normal. It doesn't do anything this is this, to wood. Is this dust discoloration or is it something yeah, else? Yeah, it actually grinds off. So it's, I okay. mean, it's just a surface level thing. All it's right. just moisture. Just so this right here is a piece that was in the form. Different bow, obviously, different form. Mm -hmm. um, off the top of your head, do you know how many different types of bows you're making right now? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to throw you a curveball. I just, Turkish, I, Scythian, Tatar, Rubal, Georgian, um, Sindh, Persian. Um, did I hear something about Korean somewhere? Korean. Korean? Korean. I, I was going to say, I, I see um, this. Madiar, uh, Hungarian. Hungarian. We, so like 10. You might, yeah. <laughs> uh, just, just for starters. Just for starters. That's amazing. And Plus I you're do doing like, longbows? Well, I do, I do want to, yeah, Mongol. There's 11. Uh, yeah. I do want to make a, a, a Egyptian angular bow. That's, that's my next challenge. So what's, what's, oh my God, that sounds incredible. Do you remember the length? And they're or different sizes. May, may I just want to give people an idea of just not every bow you pick out there is huge. Not everything is going to be, it's designed for the shooter, correct? So, I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, this is this is like a reject bow. It, it just didn't turn out very well. This is something I made when I first started. But. Um, so you keep your. Uh, yeah. You know, you've, yeah, it's good for to show people, you know, have like examples but i mean this this little bow here would have probably drawn 27 20 inches you know especially when it's strong and pulled back I mean, yeah i mean it probably would have been 90 pounds that's incredible incredible yeah, that's really cool. so this is very similar so just real quick this is how many pieces in here uh it's still here that, that that's a three-piece construction just okay like, just yeah. like when you started yeah so you there. got the limb and you got the handle mm -hmm. and then here's like the cross section of what let's get some good light on that so I want people to see this. So explain those layers right there. So here's the horn. Okay, the black. Right. There's the wood. All right. This section here is all the sinew. That's all sinew. So that's, that's how sinew. much sinew actually goes. Yeah, on. and then a little bit of that, like actually, like barely. It's actually like point uh, zero three millimeters. Is is uh, goat skin. That's, that's, this that's, is all tattooed. I have seen this, and you've done this before with many different bows, and just um, you know, a technique that I've, I've so far I've only seen you actually do. But 
just to get an idea of how much work is involved, that piece of wood right there mm. used to be comparable in thickness to what? Similar to what just went into the mold? Yeah, just like that. So you're going from something that's a solid three quarter, possibly a little bit more. It's about like 16, down, 17. Down to two. that. Yeah. And the I, should, why, I should hold it. I should hold it this way for yeah. comparison. Yeah, the reason why it's uh, it's super thick is because you know you want a nice rigid piece. Once all this the pieces are assembled, right. um, mm -hmm. nice and rigid, uh, so you can glue the horn to it um, and clamping. So um, so the woods. Yeah, so the woods get overpowered by the horn. Yeah, exactly. Well, not that you need something with a really sturdy frame the clamp to, to, to clamp to, you know, because um, to to glue the the horn to the wood, uh, it's, a, it's a process of its own. And you actually, that extra thickness that gives you the opportunity to actually shape the wood, take out any yeah. deficiencies or any faults you find in the wood and be able to mold around that? Well, you, bef no, you, uh, you pick the wood before you even decide to, to bend it. And so you're not just grabbing any old tree out of the woods, you're no, actually, you no. have to hand pick everything. Yeah, I, like I'll, I, the wood, you have to select the grain and look at the grain and be like, yeah, that's going to work. You know, there can't be any, like, wavy stuff going on. It has to be really straight grain, so. So roughly, like, out of one out of how many trees makes the cut? No pun intended. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one out of ten, one out of twenty, it just depends on the area. Just, you know, know. If you get lucky or not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. All right, Jay. Well, we're going to definitely be tuning in again with you, too, man. We want to see more of this, okay? Cool. All right, Chris. Thank you, brother. No problem. All right. Man. Peace, guys.